What's up, everybody? And today we are checking out this is America's M142 Himars. H I M A R S. I don't know if I said that correctly. It is some artillery, some rockets. I want to check this out. Uh, I got sent it by someone saying, Hey, I know you've been doing a lot of, um, you know, um, aircraft and stuff like that. We should check out some of the actual weapons that we've got. So I'm going to check this out. It's by the US Military News Channel, which is the best military news channel, the best military channel for uh, equipment and aircraft and vehicles on YouTube. It really is. So don't forget to go over into the description down below if you want to watch it without me waffling over the top of it. You can certainly do that. Okay. Don't go, don't forget to go over there, give it a like, comment, subscribe. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on my videos because it helps with that mysterious YouTube algorithm that we don't know anything about. Who's texting me? Get out of here, Discord. Get out of here. Anyway, let's watch this. Let's have some fun. This let's... is America's high-mobility artillery rocket system. Oh! High okay. Artillery rocket system. High mobs. High mobility artillery rocket system. High Mars. Okay. Whoa! Oh my God, look at that vehicle shift. The M142 high mobility artillery rocket system, High Mars, has been getting a lot of press lately due to the 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine. Is this what the they've been Mars using? Is, is this what Ukraine's been using on, using on Russia? Spectrum combat proven all weather 24 7 lethal and responsive wheeled precision strike weapon system. Woo! HIMAR stands as a combat proven mainstay in the Army's fleet of launchers oh my and God. one of the Army's top modernization priorities. Long oh my God, the speed of that then. Oh my God. Yeah, nasty. Range precision fire. Oh. The rocket launcher provides close and long range precision rocket and missile fire support for joint oh forces, days. early entry expeditionary forces, contingency forces, and field artillery brigades supporting brigade combat teams. Showcasing its strength and lethal payload, HIMARS is deployed in theaters worldwide. It's deployed worldwide, that makes sense. I'm presuming Ukraine are using this. We have an incredible Presuming. team across the country dedicated to the continued success of HIMARS, said Colonel Guy Yelverton, Program Executive Office Missiles in Space, Strategic and Operational Rockets and Missiles Project Office Project Manager. As a field artilleryman myself, I'm very proud of our combined effort to field HIMARS to soldiers and field artillery units around the world. That's cool. That I, I, You never really hear anything about this narrator, do you? The HIMARS is designed to support joint early and forced entry expeditionary operations with high volume destructive, suppressive, and counter battery fires. Oh my god, that'd give you an headache, wouldn't it? Oh, how'd you like your truck? Developed in, in the pieces. late 1990s for use by the US Army, it's the wheeled version of the M270 MLRS. The M142 HIMARS is made up of two different components the launcher and a five ton truck chassis from the US Army's family of medium tactical vehicles while large it's not as big as other similar systems i mean it's big enough mate it's big enough let's be honest look at the size of it did you see him flying away my god weighing in at thirty-five thousand eight hundred pounds when loaded and at only seven meters in length only the high mars is equipped to carry six 227 millimeter guided artillery rockets I wonder how long it takes to reload these things and get all them rockets put back inside and then get, get deployed again. Six rockets is is a decent amount, especially if you've got three or four vehicles. But I'm wondering what the uh, turnover is on them. Do you know what I mean? Or one MGM-140 Attackums missile. The pod in which the weapons are mounted is identical to the twin ones equipped by the M270 giving it 50% of its counterpart's firepower. Oh. Given the variation in munitions, the system has an effective targeting distance of between 5 and 190 miles. 190 miles! Oh my days! Oh my god! That's mental! The high-mobility artillery rocket system is operated by a crew of three. The driver, gunner, and launcher chief. Just them three lads, that's it. They all do it. They do all of it. Just them three lads. <laughs> However, the computer-based fire control system enables a crew of two or a single soldier to load and unload the system. 
Oh, okay. The fire control system includes video, keyboard control, a gigabyte of program storage, and global positioning system, GPS. Yeah, but can he play Doom? Do you know what I mean? It's got Solitaire on there. The launcher can aim at a target in just 16 seconds. It's possible for the crew to select pre-programmed multiple mission sequences, which have been stored in the computer. He screamed at his mate then, didn't he? Fire! Sat right next to him. Just give him a nudge. Fire. Don't be like, fire, friggin' hand of doom. Straight hand of doom. Fire! <laughs> exactly how much does HIMARS cost? Manufacturer Lockheed Martin refused to give cost estimates. Of course. Freaking Lockheed Martin. Instead, referring queries to the U.S. Army's Aviation and Missile Command. The cost of HIMARS is split between the launcher itself and separate contracts for various munitions, including guided and unguided rockets and the Attackums missiles. Interesting. Some estimates put the cost of a HIMARS guided rocket at $100,000 to $200,000 a piece, May. or an Attackums at more than $700,000 oh a piece. Oh my days! $700,000 a pop! Don't miss! Come out your paycheck for the rest of your life! Oh my god! HIMARS is a tribute to the dedication and commitment of those who have developed, tested, built, fielded, and operated this battle-tested, lethal, and highly responsive rocket launcher, said Daryl Colvin, Program Executive Office Missiles and Space Deputy Program Executive Officer, who served... U.S. military news comes up with the best stuff. Like, how did they get all this information? It's really impressive, isn't it? ...served as a lieutenant colonel and field manager for the Field Artillery Launcher's Product Office HIMARS program when the launcher first deployed. I congratulate and appreciate the broad team for supporting the HIMARS mission and delivering this critical capability to the warfighter. It's a good bit, kid, isn't it? HIMARS launcher addresses... Them cows best get out of the way, because when that goes off, they're going to brick themselves, aren't they? ...army readiness now and in the future to achieve overmatch deter threats, and win the future fight, Colvin said. Make sure you got muzzle clearance there, mate. constant preservation and innovative progression, HIMARS flexes its strength on the military front lines and enables global joint all-domain efforts. Oh, my God. Are they sat in there when that goes off? Use Are they of sat the in it? Use of the M142 HIMARS. The primary and first country to equip the M142 HIMARS is the United States. In May 2005, the system was introduced to the U.S. Army's 3rd Battalion, 27th Field Artillery Regiment, 17th Airborne Corps Artillery. It has since seen its use expanded to other areas of the Army, as well as with the Army National Guard and the U.S. Marine Corps. It's mental how many of these are probably in, in the hands of people right now. How many of these units are actually out there? It's probably a scary amount, isn't it? Other countries that have adopted the HIMARS into their weapons catalog are Singapore, the United Arab Emirates, Romania, Jordan, and Ukraine, with others mm. discussing the possibility of operating the system in the future. The HIMARS has seen use in a handful of conflicts, most notably the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. The U.S. Army used the system in Iraq to avoid damaging buildings when fighting urban battles. Oh my god, the dust. Oh, I hope they've got some sort of respirators on in the vehicle. And it played a key role in the Battle of Mosul in October 2016. There's been use of HIMARS in the Syrian civil war as well. The U.S. Army fired rockets into Syria in support of the rebels in March 2016. A month later, it was announced the U.S. would be deploying the system to Turkey as part of the battle against ISIS. Makes sense. On June 23rd, 2022, the first HIMARS arrived in Ukraine, according to Ukraine's defense minister, Oleksiy Reznikov. Yeah, it makes sense that Ukraine would use these, to be honest. I mean, the amount of funding that Ukraine are getting right now, um, it makes sense that they get sent some of these. I think that's probably a very good thing to give them to be honest with you two days later ukraine started deploying the system according to ukraine's general staff valery zaluzhny artillery men of the armed forces of ukraine skillfully hit certain targets military targets of the enemy on our ukrainian territory interesting marines kill target oh my god look at that that can't be real that's that's not real that shot that's not real with HIMARS and F-35 in devastating pairing. What? According to Lieutenant General Stephen R. Rudder, Deputy Commandant for Aviation, the U.S. Marine Corps have achieved a milestone when a target was destroyed by connecting an F-35B Lightning II aircraft with a HIMARS rocket shot for the first time. 
We Yo, were able what? to connect the F-35 to a HIMARS to a rocket shot, and we were able to target a... So the F-35 was able to lock this in and control it remotely or something, or it was just giving coordinates or something. ...particular Konex box, Rudder told audience members Friday at an aviation readiness discussion at the Center for Strategic and International Studies, or CSIS. The shot was all done through data link, according to Rudder. The F-35 used sensors and pushed data about the location of the target that was then fed to a HIMARS system. Wow. The HIMARS unit then destroyed the target. It's all about sensor to shooter, Rudder said. Do you know, that connectivity is massive. People don't realize how big that actually is. Last fall, the Corps successfully fired and destroyed a target 70 kilometers out on land from the deck of the amphibious transport dock Anchorage. Oh my God. Oh my God, look at that. They can go anywhere. HIMARS launchers will fire the future long range precision strike missile. Tactical oh, so th this is something that's constantly being upgraded, which I've gone over this plenty of times on this channel, that if a bit of equipment in the military is good for adapting for future um, missions or future hardware. It's so important, so important. Designers at Lockheed Martin Corporation will build launchers for next generation surface to surface rockets designed to destroy enemy targets as far away as 310 miles. HIMARS launchers will fire the Army's future long range precision strike missile. 310 miles? Oh my days. So, Prism. A surface-to-surface, all-weather, precision-strike-guided missile fired from the M270A1 MLRS and the M142 HIMARS. My God. PRISM should enter service in 2023. PRISM is to replace non-insensitive and cluster munition versions of the Army MGM-140 Attackums. It'll provide Army and U.S. Marine Corps field artillery units with long-range and deep-strike capability. The prism will destroy... New it's mental to think that any country could ever go up against America at this point. Like, at any point, really. But, oh my God, the amount of the amount of technology they have. Not to mention the amount of money in the military. If you think about how much of a disaster the, the war's been on with Russia and how bad it's been for them. The US would just demolish. Neutralize or suppress targets at ranges of 43 to 250 miles using indirect precision fires. Wow. The baseline missiles will be able to engage a wide variety of targets at ranges as long as 310 miles. It'll emphasize imprecisely located area and point targets. Primary emphasis for follow on upgrades will be increased range, lethality, and ability to attack time-sensitive, moving, hardened, and fleeting targets. Mental. By 2025, the Army will be able to use the long-range prism to attack and destroy moving enemy ships operating offshore at ranges out to about 310 miles. <laughs> while the weapon primarily has... That, do you realize how big that is? Not only the distance of that is absolutely bizarre, but the fact that they can hit a moving target out at sea is unreal. Unreal. Surface to surface applications for use against enemy air defenses, troop fortifications, and armored vehicle columns. The prism is being configured with an advanced targeting multi mode seeker to include maritime strike. Whoa. The new targeting seeker has completed a captive carry test wherein it flew aboard an aircraft against representative targets in preparation for further testing and ultimate deployment. That's terrifying. Anyway, their videos are absolutely brilliant as always. Don't forget to check out them in the description down below. What a great video. It's interesting to know that these are actually being used in Ukraine right now. Like, that's mental. And they're only going to get upgraded even more. 310 miles? Oh my god. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. I love you all. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.